Welcome to the Homeschool Mama Self-Care Podcast. I'm Teresa Wiedrich from CapturingTheCharmedLife.com. If you're a homeschool mama challenged by doubt, not sure you can do this homeschool thing. If you're a homeschool mama challenged by overwhelm, there's just too many things to do. Or if you're a homeschool mama that's not showing up in the way she wants to show up in her homeschool, then this is the podcast for you. I've dedicated this third season of the Homeschool Mama Self-Care Podcast to the new-er homeschool mama or to the homeschool curious. So if you've been homeschooling for just a few years, just a few months, or considering homeschooling for the upcoming year, then this podcast season is dedicated to you. So welcome, homeschool mama. Today we're going to address the question, what about gaps? in my child's home education. Charlotte is a homeschool mama of three in my home province of British Columbia, and here's what she asks. So I'm planning to homeschool my kids this upcoming year, and I'm really excited about it. I know that we all did this homeschool thing back in early 2020, but I've been told that it's nothing like what real homeschooling is. One of the biggest things that I'm concerned about is gaps. What if I can't teach my kid algebra? Everybody says it, but I actually think I can't. Or all the other things that maybe kids are doing in school and I can't manage to fit into my day. Great question, Charlotte. Once upon a time, I had that very concern myself. I know the reasons we're concerned about gaps can be very different from one homeschool mom to the other. There's different things that we think we can't handle. There's different things that we think there's no way that we're able to bring these ideas or these concepts into our home. How are we going to do it all? And this one that Charlotte brings, I think, is brilliant because she's onto something. We don't have as much time as we think to make sure that our kids know everything there is to know about everything, because we also have the dishes to do. But before we get started on a discussion about how do we address that question about gaps in our kids' home education, I'm asking you to jump on my website, capturingthecharmlife.com, to share with me the reasons that you're most concerned about having gaps in your child's home education. Okay, so let's talk about gaps in our kids' home education. We can homeschool beyond doubt, uncertainty, and that not good enough feeling when we get clear on the question, what makes you question whether your kids' education isn't good enough? These infamous things called gaps, what even are they? Gaps. The word suggests there's something missing. Someone forgot something. Someone didn't catch all the details the first time, the second time, the quadrillionth time. Someone forgot to share something. Someone's missing something. Or if you're thinking about the latest fashion trends with reasonable prices from a place called The Gap, that's not what I'm talking about today. Straight up, I don't actually believe there's an education out there that doesn't have gaps. It's not a thing. There are no children anywhere who make it through public school, private school, tutorship, a Sudbury school, a Waldorf school, a Montessori school, home school, law school, or medical school, or any school whatsoever that doesn't have a gap. We all have gaps. That is why none of us is capable of writing for every topic on Wikipedia. That is why none of us is consulted for everything. That is why none of us declare ourselves to be as knowledgeable as God. And that is definitely why all of us consult the Google bar, right? Or DuckDuckGo, whichever you prefer. We all, and I mean all, have gaps. If you were to travel to a foreign country and have a conversation with someone, they might be surprised that you didn't learn about the history of their country, or the politics in their region, or know how to speak their language. This has happened to me. I sat with a few neighborhood teenagers at a community hospital compound where we were staying in rural Ghana. Some of the kids were playing basketball on the court with my five-year-old son. Some of the kids were showing off their scorpion catching skills. They really were. And some of the kids were hanging out with me and my girls as we waited for my husband to get back from the hospital for dinner. 
Simon, a 16-year-old boy, told me about his aspirations to come to Canada one day. I showed him pictures of snow. He thought it was cold enough where we were sitting already. It was the winter season in Ghana, whereas I thought it was the hottest temperatures I've ever experienced. Certainly the most humid. Somehow, we got onto a conversation about the history of Ghana. And to Simon's shock, I couldn't remember what year the Ghanaians got out from under colonial rule. He was dumbfounded. How was it even possible that I wouldn't know? Because I'd never discussed Ghanaian history in my entire life at any school, ever. So I definitely did not know the answer. The reason I knew a few things about Ghana was from my own pre-travel studies. Naturally, we were doing a unit study, as a homeschool family, of course. And we had already visited rural Kenya a couple years prior, so we already did some study on that side of the African continent and had a general sense of what was going on in the 50s and 60s. Oh, and I remembered a story about the Obamas visiting a slave departure point at Cape Coast Castle in Ghana. That I remember. Especially because I wanted to visit that castle at the end of our trip when we'd fly back to the capital city of Ghana named Accra. It would only be a few hours to drive there from Accra. Someone told me Cape Coast Castle was the origin of the movie Amistad. The images of slave trade history were cemented in my mind from my very first date with my husband. Watching this movie was our first date. Classical first date movie, I'm sure, but I digress. Anywho, turns out Sierra Leone was the location of the origin of the Amistad storyline. I'd learned about that somewhere along the line. Cape Coast Castle was a transport way station for humans. How do I know? Because I googled it. Which still might prove that those details are not entirely accurate, but for sure I didn't cover it in school. You might also not be surprised that these Ghanaian kids didn't know how many provinces are in Canada, or that we still have territories, or that most Canadians will never see an igloo. Not even me, though I've lived in Canada 48 years and have actually touched the waters of the Arctic Ocean. That I live in an area that has warmer summers than much of the American Midwest. That I even lived in a city tucked in a semi-arid zone in Canada. That every Canadian doesn't like hockey, that would be me. But if I did cheer for a hockey team, it would be the Edmonton Oilers because my childhood was in Alberta in the 80s that our Canadian national sport is lacrosse, which I'm not sure I've ever seen played. That I do indeed live in the backcountry in the mountains where bald eagles, black bears, cougars, Canadian geese, and beaver live right outside my door. Well, not right outside my door, but almost, like really almost. I'm part of a small population of Canadians that live like this. Most people live in a major city center or the suburbs. They have access to shopping malls, including The Gap. They drive 20 minutes to soccer lessons or nature reserves in areas with sidewalks and streetlights. I don't have those either. Not every Ghanaian kid would know that every Canadian doesn't like Tim Horton's coffee. That is definitely me. Also, I don't like Starbucks, but I digress again. And though I travel to the Arctic one summer and touch the Arctic Ocean with my three little girls, Most Canadians live along the very southernmost border of the U.S. and will never see the Arctic, nor will they see the endless trees of the Yukon or discover that the Dempster Highway appears to be made of arrowheads. But I don't think it's just these Ghanaian boys that don't know about these things. You might not have known them either. And I likely don't know about the things where you live. My homeschool family of six was introduced to all manners of things we had never been introduced to in northwestern Ghana, like cerebral malaria and how to treat it. We were in Ghana because my husband volunteered at a hospital. A vat of spilled oil, burning oil, could burn most of a grown man's torso and yet would still only be treated with Tylenol because that's all that was available. I didn't know how to barter in a market. Not something the Safeway produce guy knows how to do either. I didn't know how to speak to people that didn't speak the same language. I smiled stupidly instead. 
I didn't know how to balance a 50-pound tray of mangoes on my head. I'd surely need to book a chiropractic appointment if I tried. I learned I didn't know how to walk alongside the road, a skill I quickly gained as I was told pedestrians don't have the right of way the world over. I knew nothing about carpenter flies, huge carpenter flies, scorpions, and giant black beetles the size of my palm, or how to get rid of them when in the shower as they crawled up my leg, or lying on the bed when a scorpion went across my forehead as I was in a malarial stupor. And I definitely didn't know about the history of Ghana. So those high school Ghanaian students, Simon was dumbfounded that I couldn't recount the story of Ghanaian freedom from colonial rule. How did I possibly not know that veritable, expansive information? Because I didn't grow up there. Because the people educating me apparently didn't find that information valuable. Side note, that is the key to letting go of the notion that a home education must have no gaps. You get to decide what you think is valuable for your child's education. I'm interrupting this episode to let you know that I will be offering a year-end assessment. Are you wrapping up your homeschool year? Even in my most traditional homeschool years, I've always wrapped things up by now around the end of May, or just brought the kids outside to sit and draw and read some poetry or write some poetry, narrate a Shakespeare play, learn Latin names for native plants. Yes, I really did. Learn the name of cloud formations or identify animal scat, also known as harnessing my inner Charlotte Mason. Although I don't think there was any discussion of animal scat. The kids loved it. It's also the time of year we assess our homeschool, our past homeschool year, and use that as a brainstorming tool to imagine our upcoming homeschool year. So I invite you to a year-end assessment. If you want to do your homeschool and your life on purpose, then you need regular breaks from doing the same old, same old, and check out how it's working for you and your kids, or if it's not. I'll spend an hour and a half with you assessing your homeschool, then creating an action plan to reimagine and recreate your upcoming homeschool year. Everyone who joins the year-end assessment will receive a recorded copy of the event and a free download of the Reimagine Your Charmed Homeschool Journaling Workbook. You'll also receive a discount coupon for the D-School Your Homeschool Intensive that's coming up. Can't wait to see you there. So connect with me at www.capturingthecharmedlife.com. Now back to the episode. I think we need to be less concerned about gaps and more concerned about personalizing an education. Like, who's this kid in front of me? How do they like to learn? What do they like to learn? What type of learning is valuable for them right now? Not 10 years from now when they're supposed to be graduating, but right now. What will help them grow to be the person they were meant to be? And I think we need to be less concerned about gaps and more concerned that you are the facilitator of that education. So how can you help them? What skills do you have that you can share with them? What do you want to share with them? What do you want to impart to them or learn with them? What could you do to learn or discover or explore so that you could be better equipped to be their facilitator? And of course, I also believe this one thing, the most important thing. You get to decide what you want them to learn and how you want to shape their education. That's why you homeschool. So have you determined what you think an education is anyway? It ain't about trying to cover all the gaps. Now, you have many things to do with your kids and facilitate for your kids so they can grow up to be the humans they were meant to be. I hope this has given you a lot of clarity about why you don't need to be concerned about gaps anyway. But if you have a comment or a thought and want to throw it at me, you can post a comment anywhere, but especially on this episode show notes at capturingthecharmlife.com. I'm so glad you joined me today. If you have any thoughts or questions about the episode, I'd love to hear from you. So head over to my website, www.capturingthecharmedlife.com. If you're looking for an authentic, supportive community with like-minded homeschool mamas who want to show up on purpose in their homeschool and their lives, you're welcome to join us at the Homeschool Mama Patreon community. 
Not only will you have good old-fashioned support chats, but you'll get discounts on the D-School Your Homeschool Intensive, group coaching, and extended live interviews with previous podcast guests. I'm looking forward to getting to know you and your homeschool family. I'll see you there.